Hello everyone. Again, I welcome you all to my lecture class. And in my today's class, I am going to talk about bundle branch blocks in details. In my previous ECG classes, I have talked about bundle branch blocks in a very short span. And today, I am going to do the detailing, the mechanism of bundle branch blocks, and how you are going to recognize bundle branch block from certain patterns in ECG. So let's begin. Bundle branch blocks can be of two types that is right bundle branch block and left bundle branch block. Let's see how right bundle branch block presents in the ECG. What will be the ECG pattern and what is the mechanism of these ECG patterns in right bundle branch block. Now what happens in right bundle branch block? The first phase of ventricular activation is the stimulation of the interventricular septum. The left side of the interventricular septum gets stimulated initially and that is by a branch of the left bundle. Since there is right bundle branch block, so the initial stimulation of the septum is not affected, it is unaffected. And the septum is stimulated from left towards right side. So in V1, it will result in a small positive wave that is a small R wave. Whereas in V6, which is a left oriented lead, in V6, it will result in a small negative wave that is small Q wave. Okay. Now, what happens in the next phase? The next phase of ventricular stimulation is the stimulation, simultaneous stimulation of both the left and the right ventricle. Normally, left ventricular stimulation predominates and the stimulation is towards left side. That means the stimulation because of predominance of ventricular stimulation, the stimulation or depolarization occurs from right towards left side. So, this stimulation is recorded as a deep negative S wave in right oriented lead that is lead V1. Okay, And the same phenomena is recorded in the left oriented lead that is lead V6 as a big positive wave that is R wave. Now, what happens in right bundle branch block? Normally, the ventricular stimulation is simultaneous both the right and left ventricles get stimulated at the same same time but in case of right bundle branch block there is delay in right ventricular stimulation or delay in right ventricular depolarization which results in a third phase of ventricular stimulation so because of the delayed phase of ventricular right ventricular stimulation there will be Again, a third wave in right oriented lead that is lead V1. Since the activation is occurring from left towards right, so the right oriented lead that is lead V1 is going to record a positive wave that is R dash. Okay. And the same phenomena is going to record it in the left oriented lead that is lead V6 as a negative wave. That is S wave. Okay. So finally in the ECG we are going to have a, a R S R dash pattern in lead V1. And in lead V6 we are going to have a Q R S pattern. This R S R dash pattern almost looks like an M. Okay, and this QRS pattern almost looks like a W. So, this is for the easy remembrance. Okay, in lead V1, the pattern in case of right bundle branch block will look like an M. Okay, the QRS complex will look like a M. Now, what are the causes of right bundle branch block? A right bundle branch block can be seen in normal persons also. So it is not always pathological. Okay. In normal heart also, if there is no structural disease, then also it can be present. 
and it can also be a sign of organic heart disease so right bundle branch block can happen in case of myocardial infarction it can uh, be seen with atrial septal defect okay in case of pulmonary embolism in case of degenerative disease involving the right side of the heart involving the right bundle and in cases of cardiomyopathies so these are the few common causes of right bundle branch block and how we are going to treat a case of right bundle branch block that is of course by treatment of the underlying disease okay that is all about right bundle branch block now let's talk about left bundle branch block as the name suggest in left bundle branch block there is a block in the left main bundle of his in this case since we have already talked that the first phase of ventricular stimulation is the stimulation of the left part of the interventricular septum and this occurs through a branch of left bundle so in case of left bundle branch block this ventricular septal stim interventricular septal stimulation is uh, going to be hampered and in this case the stimulation does not occur from left towards right which happens normally but in this case the stimulation occurs from right towards left okay so since it is occurring from right towards left so the right oriented lead that is lead v1 is not going to record any positive wave normally it records a small r wave but since the vector is or the stimulation direction of the stimulation is towards the left side so v1 is going to record a negative deflection whereas the v6 which is oriented towards the left side it is going to record a positive deflection now what happens in the next phase of ventricular stimulation in the next phase of ventricular stimulation though there is left bundle branch block but still the left ventricle predominates okay and because of the predominance of left ventricular stimulation there will be a, a big negative recording of a big negative wave okay that is qs pattern in lead v1 and left oriented lead that is lead v6 is going to record a big positive wave okay so in left bundle branch block both the early and the late phase of the ventricular stimulation is getting affected okay the late phase of the ventricular stimulation even uh, uh, even though there is left bundle branch block still the stimulation of the left ventricle predominates than the right ventricle but because of the delayed depolarization since there is bundle branch block so there will be delay in the depolarization so because of the delay in depolarization the qrs complex will be wide one more important thing is that bundle branch blocks that is right bundle branch block or left bundle branch block uh, duration of qrs complex is important if the duration is more than 0.12 second then it is known as complete lbbb left bundle branch block or complete rbbb if it is less than 0.12 second then it is known as incomplete incomplete lbbb or incomplete rbbb okay so uh, what are the common causes of left bundle branch block we have already known that right bundle branch block can be seen in normal heart also but whenever there is left bundle branch block it is suggestive of structural or organic heart disease it can be seen in cases of myocardial infarction it can be seen with valvular heart disease okay where the right side of the uh, left side of the heart is getting affected in cases of cardiomyopathies in case of hypertensive heart disease and degenerative heart disease involving the left side of the heart so these are the few common causes of left bundle branch block and the treatment is of course treating the 
underlying cause okay so till now we have talked about the block in the left main bundle of his okay but there is something more to it the left bundle branch is subdivided into an anterior fascicle and a posterior fascicle okay so this is a, a diagrammatic representation of the bundle branch bundle of his so the bundle of his gets divided into right bundle and the left bundle a right bundle it is a single pathway but left bundle again gets divided into an anterior fascicle and a posterior fascicle so block in the left bundle of his can happen in the left main bundle okay that is left bundle branch block or it can happen in the anterior fascicle or it can happen in the posterior fascicle but unlike the main uh, bundle branch block that is uh, left main bundle branch block the fascicular blocks or also known as hemi block will not result in any characteristic widening of the qrs complex rather it will result in characteristic qrs axis deviation in case of rbbb or in case of lbbb the main characteristic is the widening of qrs complex with certain typical patterns which we have already discussed but again i am saying in case of hemi blocks or fascicular blocks there is uh, no typical widening of the qrs complex rather there is a typical uh, deviation of the qrs axis in case of left anterior fascicular block there will be left axis deviation and basically this is one of the commonest cause of left axis deviation in ecg the left axis deviation will be uh, around minus 45 degree or more and in the ecg we can uh, see the pattern in 2 3 and avf avf we will see this rs complex a small r wave and a deep s wave negative wave and in lead 1 we can see qr complexes a small negative wave that is q followed by a big r wave okay so r a uh, small rs will look like this okay and this qr will look like this so lead 2 3 avf we are going to see this pattern that is small rs pattern and in lead 1 we are going to see this qr pattern along with left axis deviation in that case we are going to say that there is left anterior fascicular block left foot posterior fascicular block is one of the uh, rare entity and in left posterior fascicular block there will be right axis deviation it can be up to 120 degree or more and the pattern of qrs complex in the ecg in it is almost uh, just the uh, opposite of left anterior fascicular block so in lead 2 3 avf we are going to get qr complex the complex will look like this okay and in lead 1 we are going to get rs complex the complex will look like this okay so this is just the opposite of left anterior fascicular block and this is how from the characteristic changes in the axis qrs axis along with this typical patterns we can know and diagnose a case of fascicular blocks or hemi blocks from the ecg so in this class we have talked about the right bundle branch block the left bundle branch block and the hemi blocks so that is left anterior fascicular block and left posterior fascicular block and how we are going to diagnose it from the typical ecg patterns thank you